Welcome to Advice for Grad Students. I'm your host, Phil Hahn. I'm an MIT SSP alum, and joined with me today is Peter Krauss, a fellow alum and associate professor at Boston College. The views expressed today are our own and don't reflect our institutions. Peter, welcome to Advice for Grad Students. Thanks so much for having me, Phil. Looking forward to the conversation. All right, today's conversation is on field work. And uh, Peter, I'm glad you did that because I know you've done a ton of field work. So let's get right into it. What advice do you have for uh, students for field work? Sure. So first and foremost, just kind of want to define what field work means because there's a lot of different definitions out there. To me, I have a pretty expansive definition, which is any type of research you're doing kind of away from your desk, away from your home institution. And it could be a wide variety of things, right? It could be archival research, it could be interviews, it could be field experiments. But to me, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about field research is uh, it was one of the most enjoyable experiences I had as a graduate student and still have as a professor. And there's a lot of important ethical and logistical challenges and considerations, which I'm gonna talk about, but I just wanna start on a positive note, which is from my perspective, Fieldwork is one of the best parts and most essential parts of doing great research. I have never seen a single project in political science that wouldn't benefit from fieldwork. It doesn't mean that every project requires fieldwork. I just think you can learn about a situation from your desk all day, but until you're there, until you see how a city is laid out, until you are driving through a checkpoint, until you see how people in the community actually talk about the issue you are potentially studying from afar, I don't know if you can fully understand it. And so I just want to start with a point on saying, hey, I think field work is great. And to me, how is it done well? When it's done well, it's deep and it's slow. Now, what do I mean by that? I know as grad students, you don't necessarily have a ton of money and time. Well, maybe you have a little more time than as a professor, but not as much money to go and do extensive field research. And so you're like, hey, I've only got a few weeks. I've only got a month or two. I've got to get in there, grab my data, get out of there. And honestly, in my opinion, I think that can be a very problematic way of doing field research, both for yourself and for the people that you're gonna be engaging with. If you can, the best way to think about field research is this is a career long commitment and engagement with the community that you are interacting with and hopefully in some ways becoming a part of. The people who do the best research and the best field work see things in that way. They respect their surroundings, they make personal connections, they build both their professional and personal network, and they're not just doing everything in a way that's instrumental to their field research. They're spending as much time as they can, they're learning the languages, they're developing local knowledge. That's what's going to get you not only those great nuggets of insight about the region you're studying or the topic you're studying, but it's also gonna make you someone who's giving back to the field site, to the people who are there, who's a respected member of the community. And then when you wanna go back later as a professor, maybe you don't have the same amount of time or otherwise, you've developed those relationships. And so whether it's collaboration or being able to do field work from afar during COVID when you can't you know, logistically or ethically travel there, you can do that stuff. Whereas if you do the kind of you know, parachute in dive right back out with the data, you know, you might be causing problems in that community and you're certainly not setting yourself up for success. So that's just a first background point on field work. Now, in terms of how you wanna plan for field research, I think there's a number of things you wanna consider. The first thing is to have a plan, right? But also be ready to toss it. And this is kind of like, you know, Napoleon preparing for conflict, right? It's like you plan, but then you gotta adjust because, you know, the enemy gets a vote, things are gonna change. That's the way it is. I've never talked to anyone who's gone in a single field research, you know, excursion or time living somewhere where everything went according to plan. So if, especially for your very first field research trip, you have this really elaborate field experiment you want to test, et cetera, I'm not sure if that's honestly the best way to go. I think many people do try to go quote unquote into the field, which I'll talk about more in a second, to kind of test hypotheses. But from my experience, especially early on, the best thing that fieldwork does is allow you to inductively challenge assumptions and generate new questions. So many people go in saying, I was trying to test this hypothesis or answer this question. And then they go into the field and they realize that's actually not the question that people here are actually asking at all. That's not how they're framing it. And my answer doesn't actually really make sense in the context of what I'm actually seeing on the ground. So it's okay to have a plan, but make part of your plan talking to people non-instrumentally, challenging the assumptions that you're going into it with, that's what many people find is the most rewarding part of field research. Okay, methods, right? As I mentioned at the outset, there's tons of different methods. Participant observation, archival research, interviews, field experiments. Um, 
But in any case, you're going to be testing your people skills often in new or unfamiliar environments. And these are things that, again, Phil and I, we just certainly didn't have any classes on field work when I was at MIT. It was something you'd hear about along the way for maybe certain professors. But these are things that you're going to be a bit uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that there isn't now a great bunch of research out there you can read on this stuff. There is people talking about their personal experiences, people talking about how to do this stuff right. But it's going to be different than being in the classroom or sitting at your desk and you know reading some data online. And so it's important to prepare accordingly. Collaborators and affiliation. Again, this is something that's happening more and more. But a lot of great field research is not done just by you going to the field, wherever it is, whether it's down the block in Cambridge or whether it's to a foreign country and just going in, doing your stuff, living a monkish existence and then leaving. You inevitably are going to interact with people and you may want to collaborate with people, whether it's local scholars and grad students, whether it's people working in NGOs and collaboration takes on a wide variety of, of types, right? It could be co-authorship on a project, but it could also be data sharing. It could be you, you know, giving talks to a community or helping them, you know, advocate or engage with, you know, international aid donors or things like that. I mean, again, there's lots of different things you can do to collaborate, but it's an important part, I think, of not only understanding a community you're engaging with, but also doing what we call non-extractive field research, right? You don't want to think about field research as like, oh, there's a bunch of diamonds somewhere that you're going to go mine and then take out of there and then bring back with you, right? You want to think about it as this is a community of which I am going in hopefully respectfully and they're letting me into potentially their community. And so you want to do something that also helps and benefits them and certainly does not put them at risk or harm them. Next thing. Talking to faculty and students who have gone to your particular field site before you go, that's gold. Because again, they're the people who are kind of most like your situation where they're recent grad students or young scholars or people who are gonna go into the field and they can talk to you about what they did right, what they did wrong, maybe even hook you into some of their networks that they have ongoing. That was incredibly helpful for me in a variety of places that I did field research. So definitely doing that. And then honestly, thinking a bit about your own identity in the field as well. And this is very broad, right? It's not just gender or ethnicity or religion. It's all of these different things and thinking about how you're going to be perceived and received in the field, right? Are people going to be willing to talk to you? Are they going to be hesitant to talk to you? Are they going to think about where you're coming from, from the United States or wherever you're coming from? That can have an impact on how you're received, on the danger or the risk that you're potentially posing to the people who are you're talking to in the community. So again, it doesn't mean that you should think about your identity and the identity people you're engaging with and just stay away and don't interact, but you want to make a conscientious effort to think about how that's going to impact your work and how it's going to impact the people that you're engaging with. What are some of kind of the broader ethical challenges and logistical challenges you want to think about? So one is certainly power dynamics. So even the term field work or field research has a history that, you know, is somewhat controversial and sensitive. Like a lot of it for a while in some people's minds meant American or European scholars going to the global south or developing communities and kind of studying the people there and then coming back and kind of writing about them. Um, and again, I think that thankfully the norms about that have changed and you know, people really challenge a lot of that approach, but that's something that you certainly, I don't think wanna reproduce in the field. So again, thinking about you coming in as probably a you know, somewhat well-off person coming from MIT or the, uh, the United States to some of these various places and thinking about how those power dynamics play out in terms of whether people feel like they have to talk to you or how you're engaging with the community, that's really important. Um, collaboration, as I mentioned before, this can be one of the best ways to give back, right? So it's not just you're drawing on a local community to learn about a certain process or dynamic or whatnot. You're also saying, okay, these are maybe scholars in a certain community that don't have the same opportunities in terms of grant funding or methodological training or ability to publish in certain outlets. And so working with them, I think, can be a great way not only to improve your network, but to give back and to engage with people who don't have those same opportunities. So I think that's really important. Um, more broadly, you also want to think about this thing that for some people is a, they think of it as a negative connotation, but it's still important despite its flaws, which is the IRB, right, or the Institutional Review Board. Basically, this is something that comes often from the natural sciences, but even as grad students, if you're going to go interact with people, interview them, survey them, etc., you need to go through the IRB process or the human subjects process at MIT both to be trained and to present your project to them to make sure that you're protecting both yourself and the people you're going to engage with. And this goes through a lot of things, minimizing risk, being transparent and getting informed consent from people who are going to engage with you, protecting confidentiality and anonymity for your data or your information, avoiding deception. And again, 
These sound like little buzzwords, but they're really deep, important topics. Something like informed consent is not a, you ask someone if they're willing to do an interview, boom, they say, yes, okay, that's it forever. It, to me, it's also, okay, if you're going to use quotes from them, you go recontact that person and ask them, does this quote accurately represent what you said? Are you comfortable with it being presented in this way? When something's published, you share it with the community, you share it with those people, right? To me, again, that's not just good practice, that's ethically important and the right way to do that type of field research. Final point I'll raise is COVID-19, right? Right now, we're still in the middle of this pandemic, and for the past few years, it's posed unique challenges for doing field research. So I think a couple pieces of advice there. One is create what I would call modular dissertations. So yes, plan to potentially do physical field research wherever you want to go, but also plan that you might not be able to do so not just because of a lack of funding, but maybe all of a sudden travel barriers come up, health barriers come up, et cetera. So how can you still do good research, whether it's through digital archives or potentially online interviews or looking at other people's previous stuff that they've gotten from the area, that can be helpful. And then secondly, one final point for engaging with collaborators or what some people will say are field citizens, people in those communities who could still help you do that research, you're collaborating with them, but you can't physically be there. So again, these are the types of things I think you want to consider before you do field research. But if you do all this stuff, trust me, it's going to be one of the most engaging and enriching experiences that can set you up to have a great career, great knowledge about what you're trying to study, and hopefully great connections with people in the community you're engaging with. Well, well, Peter, that's great advice. You got me all fired up to go on a, a field research trip somewhere. Anyway, Peter, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and background. I'm sure this uh, uh, this piece will be incredibly important to a number of grad students. Thanks, thanks again for sharing. Thanks for having me, Phil.